The Azure Databricks activity in Microsoft Fabric Data Pipeline allows data engineers to orchestrate and run various Azure jobs, such as notebook, jars, and Python scripts by configuring connections, cluster, and advanced settings like cluster policies and unit catalog, access mode, enabling seamless integration and transformation. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can implement automated Azure Databricks activity in Fabric Data Pipeline to ingest data from Databricks file system to Fabric Lakehouse as a Delta table. We're going to see how we can also create a Power BI report on top of that data. So let's get started. The first thing I've done is to provision this Databricks to Fabric Lakehouse. So first, I'm going to create a Lakehouse. So click on this new item and then I'm going to set for Lakehouse. I'm going to call this one Sales Lake House and then click on Create. The Sales Lake House is now provisioned. So I can click on these tables and then the files and then you can see we have no data. So I'm going to create Fabric Data Pipeline and use the Azure Data Activity to orchestrate reading of the files in Databricks file system to Fabric One link as a Delta table. So in order to be able to write the data into this as a Delta table, we're going to fetch the ABFS path. So I'm going to click on this ellipsis and then click on properties. And then we can see the ABFS path. So I'm going to copy this into the clipboard and then we can come to the Fabric environment. So first you want to create your compute. So I'm going to use this Azure Databricks pipeline compute cluster and it's really important you click on this advanced option at the bottom and you want to toggle on this enable credential pass through for user level data access this is really important in order to be able to write a data into the fabric one link so once this has been sorted i'm going to come to the catalog and then i want to browse through the database file system so for now I've got this since 2015 to 2017. So we want to actually read all of this and write into the one link as a data table. So I'm going to come to the recent and then I've created the notebook. So I'm going to click on this Azure Databricks Pipeline activity. So basically we want to read all the CSV file into Spark Data Frame so we can read from this environment. So this is actually going to give us all the CSV file at the start and this is going to contain CSV. And then we want to create part to the fabric one link. This is going to be the destination. So I just have this variable. So inside a double quote, I'm going to paste what I copied. And then I can even get rid of these tables and delete. And then we want to write the data frame into fabric one link as a data table. So we have this df.write.mode. And it's going to overwrite if it exists. And then we have the format as delta. And then we have the save option or action. And then we are passing this my one link path plus the table, we are not writing as a file, but as a data table. And then we have the name of the data. We're going to have call this on sales. I'm going to change this name and call this on sales data. So this is the code. Now I want to come back here and then I want to go to the workspace. And in the workspace, I want to create a pipeline. I'm going to call this on data integration. You can use whatever you like. And then I can click on this to create. Okay, so the pipeline is now provisioned. So I'm going to click on this app activities tab and then I can see the new Azure Databricks activity so click on that so I'm going to move this clearly inside this canvas and I can come to the general tab and give a meaningful name so I'm going to stick with this Azure Databricks and then I can come to the settings tab in the settings we need to create a connection to the Databricks so I'm going to click on this select and then I can click on this more option so I'm going to set for Azure Databricks and click on that so we're going to provide the URL so we can see how it looks like we need the ADB and then the workspace and then dot Azure Databricks.net. So I'm going to come here and it's really easy to spot in the URL. So you can see from this part, everything. So I'm going to copy everything from the dot net to the left, control C and I'm going to paste control V to paste. So I can change the name if I choose. Okay. So I can give this a meaningful name. I'm going to call this one Azure Databricks connection and then I'm going to need the personal access token as the authentication kind so to get the pat i'm going to come back here and i'm going to click on this my name i want to go to the settings in the settings i want to come to the developer tab and i want to click on this manage access token so this is going to allow us to set up a secure authentication to districts api using the access token so click on manage and i can click on generate new token i'm going to call this one uh, data for fabric and this is going to be useful for the next 90 days. So I'm going to click on generate. So I'm going to copy this into the clipboard. Of course, once I click on done, I'm not going to be able to see that again. So it's really important to save them in a 
Azure Key Vault. But I'm not going to cover that in today. So I'm going to come back here and Control V to paste the PAT and then click on Connect. Okay, so we are able to successfully establish connection to our Azure Databricks workspace. So we can see the type. We have the notebook, jar, Python, and job. So for today, we're going to focus on notebook. So for the notebook path, I'm going to click on this browse. And then in the root folder, I want to pick the users. So I'm going to click on users. And then I can click on my entry ID, email. And don't forget the name of our notebook is Azure Databricks Pipeline Activity. So I can see that at the top here. So click on that. It contains the code and click on OK. So that has been configured and then we can also specify the base parameters, append libraries, which doesn't apply in this scenario. So I can go to the cluster tab and then we can provide a new cluster. We can create use an existing cluster or an existing instance pool because we have our cluster created, which is this Azure Databricks pipeline cluster. So I'm going to use the existing interactive cluster and then click on this load so we can pick the cluster ID. So I can see this here, click on that. And that's all I need to do. So since we want to automate this process, I'm going to click on schedule. And then we're going to run this every three minutes. And then I'm going to start running right now. And let me just terminate maybe by tomorrow. And then I'm going to terminate by tomorrow. So I'm going to click on apply. So I'm going to close this tab so this has been scheduled now i'm going to click on the validate to check for any errors so no errors in the pipeline click on run so i'm going to save and run the pipeline and let's see what happens amazing so we can see the pipeline run succeeded so i can click on this out field and see what's going on so we can see the run page url and then we have the execution it took just 33 seconds so i can click on this to close it and then i can click on the activity name and then we can see more detail so i can go back to the link house sales link house and i'm going to click on this to refresh and there we go we can see the sales data so we have this as a delta table which is absolutely fantastic so i'm going to switch from the lake house to the sql analytics endpoint and there we go so we have the sales data now i'm going to click on this to preview and let's say the contents of the columns and the rows okay so we have the order date year month region to the sales column which is cool now we want to actually create a Power BI report on top of this. So I'm going to actually instruct the engine not to summarize the year column. So I'm going to come to the model layout. And then under the all tables, I'm going to scroll to the right. And then I can see the sales data, which is the table. And then I want to click on the year column. And then in this properties pane, I'm going to scroll down and choose the advanced tab. And again, scroll down. And then we're going to see the summarization, summarize by. So I'm going to choose, hey, don't summarize, OK? So we don't want to summarize that column. And then we can come to the reporting tab. And I'm going to create a new report. So we're going to see the sales data table. And then we have the Power BI in the SQL Analytics endpoint. So I can see the sales data table and I can drag the year across into the report canvas. And then I can create an implicit measure using the sum or the sales column. And it's going to give us the total sales by year. So we have the year 2015 to 2017 based on the number of files in our DBFS, that is Databricks file system. So we can see we have 2015 to 2017, which is cool. Now I want to come back here and I want to go to our pipeline and I'm going to save this. OK, I'm going to save this one. Just call this one um, report and then click OK. So again, I can come to the pipeline. Now we know that we have scheduled this, so we don't need to do anything special. So I'm going to come back here to the DBFS and I want to upload more files. So click on this upload and then I want to ingest the 2018 to 2024 and then click on load. So I'm going to click on done and then we're going to see we have 2018 to 2024. So what I need to do, just come back to the Power BI. And then I can just wait for three minutes. So I'm going to click on refresh.
amazing so we can see the sum of states for 2018 2019 to 2024 and interestingly we can see this is actually not duplicated because we indicated in the code to so overwrite as the mode so this is how we can use the azure data breaks activity in the fabric data pipeline i hope you did it if you do like comment share and follow me for more videos thank you for watching bye for now